Good morning, everybody. I'm going to talk about uh, big data and healthcare today. So, just to kind of level set, I think the biggest transformation that big data is having on the economy is actually cost. It's the economics of storage. Now, previously, when we had these sort of really expensive, big monolithic systems to store data, they really stifled innovation and prevented us from doing the things that we can now do today. So, digital storage is actually growing across the whole economy at a compounded growth rate of about 60%. IT budgets are not growing at 60%, they're growing at 5%. We've seen a whole bunch of use cases in healthcare that we can now do because this the work that started at Google and then Doug finished off at Yahoo with Hadoop. We are now changing the economics of storage. So medical breakthroughs, life expectancy over the past 150 years has doubled. Why? Well, first of all, vaccines. And um, a guy called Benjamin Jetsey in 1774 took his wife and children into a field to infect them with cowpox. Why? Because he noticed anecdotally that people that got cowpox didn't get smallpox that was rifling its way through Europe at the time. That, that work was continued by Jenner, whose work was said to have saved more lives than anybody else in, the, in humankind. Louis Pasteur, of course, famous for pasteurization and germ theory, reduced mortality from all kinds of different diseases and created the first vaccines for rabies and anthrax. He also, I'm delighted to personally say, saved the beer, wine, and silk industry in France almost single-handedly. I think we can all relate to that. Uh, Alexander Fleming, in 1928, discovered, by his own admission, accidentally, penicillin. He was, in the First World War, witnessing the deaths of hundreds of thousands of soldiers. At the time, the, um, the medicines used to treat those soldiers was actually more effective at killing them than, than treating the sepsis and bacteria that was invading their bodies. 1928, discovered sep sep he discovered penicil penicillin. If that would have been available in World War I, it would have saved hundreds of thousands of lives. So those medical breakthroughs doubled life expectancy. I think we can do that again, and I think big data is going to be the driving force to do that. So today, big data and healthcare. Well, the first example that's now quite famous is the Michael J. Fox Foundation, who are looking for a cure, actually, for Parkinson's disease. Parkinson's disease is incredibly difficult to observe outside of the doctor's office. And in fact, and this is an amazing statistic, one in five people at post-mortem are discovered not to, who are diagnosed with Parkinson's disease, don't actually have Parkinson's disease. One in five people are misdiagnosed with wearable information, even my cell phone can detect a very slight change in my walking gait, we're now going to be able to treat more effectively and even find a cure, potentially, for Parkinson's disease. A Wandisco customer at the University of California, Irvine, are using uh, the new Wandisco Fusion product for WANscope active active replication, but they're using this to act more, more accurately treat sepsis. Sepsis happens on a J-curve and it's incredibly difficult to predict and then treat effectively. But they're able to use machine data, unstructured data, and now effectively treat sepsis. We're also seeing them look for ways in which they can predict cardiac arrest in heart pacemaker patients. Phenomenal, three days before it actually happens, by using the data that they get from a heart pacemaker, in addition to wearable data, of course, that we can now get via the Internet of Things. So let's now talk about the obstacles to this, and the the concerns that we have with privacy. Now, in the UK, many of you know that the government tried to create something called care.data, but the privacy concerns, it became a political football. The politicians got involved, the media got involved, and it was really canned. We, I, we recently, they recently announced that they're restarting this. It absolutely has to happen. The NHS database since the end of the Second World War is a phenomenal source of information. And for this, we should look to what actually happened in the genome sequencing project. Bill Clinton was heavily criticized, if you remember, in the, uh, in the 1990s for committing actually $2.7 billion. That created a $150 billion industry. Let's get some of the greatest minds on Earth, on Earth today away from um, predicting when people are going to click on an ad and actually to saving people's lives. Thank you very much.